Hi everyone, um, I'm Sonia Cabrillo. I used to work for a local authority before being a consultant in place management. I used to work with Matt at Trafford Council and was responsible for managing five town centres. So I come from a very practitioner's point of view in terms of the work that uh, we did. And some of you may have heard about Altringham um, was one of the places that has been used and was turned around. Uh, so in 2009 <coughs> and 10 during a recession, uh, we're not proud of this, but we were um, named and shamed as the worst place in, in the country with a 30% vacancy rate. But we had to really, we had a master plan at the time and it did bring in some benefits. But with, with the 30% vacancy rate, which was 99% in private ownership, it really didn't um, fundamentally change the heart of the town centre. So we really had to rethink how we worked with stakeholders and partners and landlords, which you've heard some of that, which Matt has mentioned uh, today. So I'm not going to go into the altering case study because most of you have probably seen it. And if you haven't, it's referenced on the High Street Task Force website. But what this is, is that this isn't just about altering them and it's about all the town centres that we've um, looked at. And as Cathy mentioned, um, through the work that we've been doing, going up and down the country, you know, so, uh, visiting over 132 local authorities, 45% of those um, have no place partnership or limited place partnership. And in some places, we've actually been where they feel they've got a very strong partnership. And on paper, you would think, oh, yes, they've got a very strong partnership. They've got all these stakeholders around the table. Um, but when you actually go in and you do the unlock in place potential and the, the four R's are referenced and in there, there's a lot of questions that we really do say to partnerships, really look at and honestly answer. And when you use that framework, you can very, very much see that um, there are gaps in those partnerships. Some are strategic, don't have a delivery arm to them. Uh, they don't know how to grow that capacity to actually become, you know, get more community involvement because it is so strategic. So there's a lot of learning that's come out of, you know, a lot of these unlock in place potential um, exercises uh, that we've done. Obviously, to understand what good partnerships are is we really need to understand what makes resilient towns. And resilient towns are about, you know, sort of like understanding the challenges. And that's some of the things that we've been talking about. Does everyone have the same understanding of the challenges in those town centres? You know, are, are you able to respond to it? Are you able to adapt? And are you flexible in the change? You know, sort of like we were talking about symptoms, causes, but then... If you, if you go down one route and you think, actually, this isn't working, are you flexible enough to be able to change that? And is the partnership the vehicle that can help uh, manoeuvre that? Vision and strategy. We've been to a lot of places that have uh, visions, and they could be for any town in the, in the country, not specific to that town centre. So they're not compelling. And when it, so if I went to speak to some of the community and say, do you recognise this place from the vision or were you part of that, developing that vision? A lot of people would have said to me, no, I don't recognise that as my place or my town. So it's around, well, how are you engaging, you know, sort of like the communities and the businesses to actually own that partnership, uh, that vision going forward and have been part of, co you know, co-producing that vision um, to address the challenges. And collaborative work, and this is something that's very strong about resilient town centres, where you feel uh, things are happening and have been successful, they have got this real good blend of interaction uh, between public, social and the commercial sector. And that place leadership, you know, underpins a lot of this work um, going forward and that joint culture of uh, joined up working and coordination. And I can't re-emphasise how important coordinating, because just recently I did uh, an Unlocking Your Place Potential and there was a lot of activity happening in this town However, when we got all the stakeholders together, they didn't know about them and they weren't joined up. And it's that thing that Cathy referenced earlier on. So what makes a good partnership? This is more about, I mean, there's a thesis written about partnerships, so, but I'm not proposing to uh, go into that today. So just to read something, and I think Steve uses this um, in his placemaking um, uh, workshops and I think it's a really good quote that is by the UN Designing People Places in 2020 um, which said place making shouldn't start with master plans but with people collaborating to make active <coughs> living places that have meaning and are cared for by their communities and I totally support this because through some of the work that we've done as a practitioner 
And through the work that we've gone around um, through the High Street Task Force, this is where it really makes a difference. And though there is a place for master planning, and we're not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater, we're just saying that there's a, a real, the two can work in tandem. And obviously everyone knows Sir John Simpson. He's got a vested interest. He's got a shop on most high streets that I've been on. And he, when he went round in 2018, and he actually did come to Altrincham as well to look at some of the work that we did. And what he found is that it's inspirational local leaders working in collaboration uh, with all sections of the community that have really put the buzz back into uh, the town centre. And that's, uh, that's one of the things that we're talking about today. And I think when we talk about partnerships, we really need to think of it as the engine. So if you're driving a car, your engine's got to be right for you to get anywhere from A to B. So if we start to think of partnerships as the engine in our town centres, making sure that the oil and all the things are working together and it's all inter interconnected, then you can get to where you need to be. And that's some of the things um, that I want to highlight today. So some of the things that we've found around the benefits of having a, um, a town centre partnership, and OJ will know this because he's been doing this for years and been um, talking about it as the Institute of Place Management. Are. And it's about creating that forum to engage local stakeholders, discussion and collaboration. It shapes and influences, um, you know, sort of the agendas. It really starts to give a direction in terms of the town development and activation, you know, sort of like what should be actually happening in the town centre. One of the questions that I always ask when we go to these, uh, doing the unlocking your place potentials is, what is your new unique selling point? And when you go around the table and asking each of the stakeholders, they've all got something completely different. So it's around, well, you know, at, you know, to come together and understand what is it that really is your unique selling point that you can build from and really uh, develop in and enhance the uh, transformation of your town centre. So it's really delivering from that baseline, understanding uh, the data, understanding um, how you can improve things. Because if you don't understand where you, you're at, you don't know where, you know, you can't understand where you're going to. So it's that um, opportunity to have that partnership, you know, that private public sector that can really access resources. And I think we've heard a lot of stories today from Hannah, from others, um, and you know yourselves, you know, how you've accessed funding and where you've got that strong partnership. You've been uh, tended to access more funding um, and it's about really providing that innovation. And that's what partnerships can really do is provide that innovation and things that you probably didn't even think about. So today I'm just going to go through a few things, focus on a few things, so around representation and collaboration, role and structure, governance, purpose and action, and obviously look at leadership as well. So in terms of representation and collaboration, what, what you find is that most uh, partnerships are either initially driven by the local authority or in some cases are driven by um, businesses. So for example, in sale, just recently, they've developed a partnership way of working, but it's not driven by the council. Though the council is a partner in that um, partnership, it's actually driven by the shop owners, the shopping centre owners, who are really passionate that they recognise that if their shopping centre is to succeed, they need to get all the town centre stakeholders working together and all the town has to be successful. So it's really about getting all the relevant stakeholders working together. And the partnership should aim to really represent that, the, the broadest term. So when I do the unlocking place potential and I go to these meetings and I actually see young people in the room, I'm delighted because young people are the people that get missed off more often than not. And yet they are the, they're our future. And it's around how do we engage with young people? So I was in Ashton, not the Ashton in Tameside, but the Ashton in Wigan, Maker, in Makerfield. And they actually had a, a group of young people, secondary high school, and they were so invaluable to that stakeholder analysis of what's going on in the town centre. And they didn't come up with really um, silly ideas either. They came up with people couldn't cross that high street because of all the HGV lorries. And out of that rose a partnership where the young people are involved and the council and that partnership are addressing that significant issue. So there's lots of things that working with young people can really change. And um, I think Steve 
I think Kathy referenced it. Sometimes you can't always please everyone. So it's starting with that coalition of who's willing to come to the table. So when we had to rethink Altringham, we had to really think about how do we get all the stakeholders involved because there was so much negativity. And um, so we did a bit of a call to action, a bit of like JFK, you know, it's, uh, it's not what you can do for you, uh, not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And we did something very similar and maybe not in that kind of way. And we got people out of the, um, the community, out of the business community, coming forward that we'd never worked with before, who were very passionate about Altrincham at the time and really helped transform it going forward. So, so, the, so until you start to work with um, your community, you don't know who's in there. So one of the things, so I think that's gone a bit all over the place, but anyway, but one of the things that I did go to one place and it says, oh, what you don't understand, Sonia, this is a very deprived community and people have got other priorities, so they're not going to be coming out to work on the town centre. And I've got examples of deprived communities where they're actually making the massive big difference. So if you go to Br Bromley by Bow, I don't think we've got any London, but you might, <laughs> the people from Dulock will, uh, um, will know uh, where that is. It started off, Bromley by Bow started with a, uh, some residents and some parents who weren't happy with some of the health provisions that were taking place in that community and, and what communities could access. And they really help transform uh, what they do. So there are, you know, examples out there of deprived areas where the communities are making a massive difference. And um, so in terms of partnerships, it's really looking at, well, what is the current sphere of activity? What is it that you want this partnership to achieve? What is your vision that you've, co you know, you've co-produced with your communities that you want to um, go to? And it's like um, Henry Kissinger said, if you, you know, if you don't, uh, I have to remember this one. Um, you know, sort of like, if you don't know where you're going, all routes lead to nowhere. And that is true. And that is, if you don't have a strong, compelling vision, how do you know where you're going to go to? And how do you know that you've got there when you've, when you've achieved it? So, so there's a lot of things to think about in terms of um, partnerships. And in each of these, it's around, well, how can they be impactful? So you can work on a lot of things that we were talking about, but if it's not joined up, it's not coordinated, you're not gonna get the impact that you want. So it's very, very helpful to use the, and we say this, and there's lots on the website, the um, High Street for um, our framework, because there's lots of questions in there for partnerships to really look at jointly, answer, and then de de um, develop an action plan behind it. So in terms of structure, the, you can either have an informal or a formal structure, uh, but in order to determine a partnership, obviously the remit, and this is really important around how, how are you going to go forward. And usually um, partnerships operate on three, three levels, and there's probably more, but these are the three main ones. So it's around, well, are you going to be um, a partnership that's influencing town centre strategy? Are you leading the strategy? Or are you delivering some activity and services? And these three activities are not mutually exclusive, so you could be doing them all but it's then understanding which model fits your town centre. And this is the model that we used in Altrincham when we were trying to do this call to action and regenerate Altrincham. And we did have a town centre partnership at the time. And um, the partnership did do, deliver some benefits, but in terms of what we tried to do is to really look at how are we going to get all the stakeholders involved in which the partnership had massive gaps in. And they actually came to us and said they didn't really have the skills and the ability to do that. So then we started to work in a different way. And by doing this, it, it grew organically and it didn't have a constitution at first. It had a, a group of people, probably the size of the number of people here, who, came, who responded to that call to action to say they were passionate, they wanted to make a difference to altering them and they could see that they could do you know they just wanted to know how to do it and how to be connected in and then so we quickly formed a board um, a strategic board and in that a lot of people were saying well I'm not interested in coming to um, a strategic meeting I'm more interested in being a doer and, I'm, and they were from the arts culture or the health and well-being side of things so we created a delivery arm which was 
the three groups that you see here that are all interconnected and coordinated. So, we, so I go back to the story and I go back to the beginning where in 2010 we were named and shamed. By a few years later, we transformed Altrincham. So it went from being the worst to the best. But we started in each of these areas delivering some activity. And actually these partners and these stakeholders say, this is our action plan. We want to be held accountable for it. And, it, and the willingness and the volunteering that came out of this was immense. And it was they who transformed Altrincham. So it's about aligning talent to areas of where they can work. <coughs> so in terms of governance, uh, whether you've got an informal or a formal, good partnerships are shaped by a shared vision, as we've mentioned. Having that coordinated development plan, understanding who can do what, where do people want to get involved, because not, as I've said, not everyone wants to sit at the table. It was um, agreed that it would be an action-focused you know, partnership. This is something that sometimes gets missed when I go up and down the country. There's a lot of talk, but there's nothing happening. And though master plans, you know, 10, 20 years, you can't always wait for that. So what's going to go on during the time that you're doing any physical work? What's making that everyone know that your town is still open for business? And that's the, um, so that joint working. And when you start to put a network people together, it's amazing which projects can come out of that and how you can deliver it. So for example, we delivered a, a whole program of activity where we white boxed a lot of the um, empty units in Altrincham and allowed meanwhile uses to take place. So the health and the voluntary sector delivered a lot of arts and crafts. Now, arts and crafts are not gonna transform your town centre, you know, sort of like for the community and the health checks that we did where people could do a health fitness. But if you've got a lot of those, then you've got the temporary art gallery pop-ups and you're using arts and culture as a way to animate the town and get people in and create that interest and that buzz. There's a catalyst there to start to really take things forward. Building trust. When we worked with the community in Altrincham and the businesses, they really had to, uh, they were sort of saying to the council, well, you take all the decision because you hold a lot of the purse strings. And it was a real leap of faith for the council to say, whatever the decisions that come out, because we understand that you're making them in the betterment of the council, that we will support you on this journey. And that trust was built that whatever they wanted to do, we would help try and support and fund. And if we couldn't, we were honest and saying, these are the reasons why we can't, but let's look at how else we can do it. So it's about setting some objectives, setting context, and making sure that um, you're action-focused and outcome-based. Uh, so place leadership, we talk about place leadership, and where does that place leadership actually come from? But everyone's got a contribution to making place leadership. It's not just about the council, and shouldn't, shouldn't be seen as a top-down approach. Um, place leaders are all, well, they're everywhere. And we've seen, you know, we've got community representatives here giving up their valuable time to be part of that. And it's around, like, as a convener, as a council being a convener, allowing um, some of that space to be taken. And strong leadership can, more often than not, a lot of the activity is taken by the community themselves, as well as businesses working together. So, for example, in Stretford, um, we had um, what used to be a town hall um, and the council declared it surplus to requirement. And under the Stratford Master Plan, Town Centre Master Plan, they decided they wanted to encourage a boutique hotel that would support some of the major sporting attractions um, in the town. And this is a deprived community. Um, and the community came out and said, no, no, we're having that community space for community facilities. And they raised £265,000 through crowdfunding and now run it as a hugely successful premises for the community, for businesses, and um, incubating businesses as well. And it's just a phenomenal, and I think some people may have actually visited it, but it is really worth seeing. So as a town moves on through transformation, partnership <coughs> is vital and a coordinated approach. Um, and if you get all those ducks lined in a row, you should, you should be successful. So there's some, a lot of things that we've learned through Matt doing his dissertation on partnerships and place leadership. Um, and, he, it, you know, sort of like local authorities and sort of like are usually seen as a responsible body for high streets. 
but it's oversimplified in terms of, you know, sort of like how you work and how town centres are made and how they're used. And so that's why it's really important to have that data so that you can understand how does your town centre function, who's in it, who's in your communities, what skills. And when we talk about skills, I don't mean physical buildings, I mean, you know, sort of like our, our assets, I mean, the people, the resource that they may have to um, add to your town centres. And when individuals and groups act collectively, that's where you see the power and that's where you see the transformation really happen on the ground. Um, so yeah, collaboration and partnership, it, it needs to be a catalyst. We talked about the engine, the car scenario. You know, if you see it like that, you can't go anywhere unless your engine's working well. That's what we need to be thinking about. And obviously, place leaders have a, a whole set of common um, traits and behaviours. Um, a lot of them are passionate, you know, that I go around it. There's nobody in any town centre that I've gone that isn't passionate about, you know, they'll have either a positive or a negative, but they're passionate. And that's the key thing about any town centre, that they, they seem to resonate with the town. They might not you know, connect with their neighbourhood, but they connect with the town centre. Uh, they're courageous, they're bold, they're uh, prepared to experiment, but more importantly, they're prepared to fail. And if it doesn't go right, try something new. You know, it don't always um, think that failure is, is a bad thing. And then obviously there's a, a number of things that drive, um, you know, sort of like being able to connect um, and nurturing and collaboration. And the key thing is that Hannah mentioned earlier on, Nurturing and collaboration networks takes time. It took time for us for altering them, but we were invested in that because we knew this vehicle that we were building, this new partnership way of working, was going to hopefully help transform Altrincham, and it did. So, and obviously there's, there's six common things there that you can read, I'll send that through, which have barriers, you know, sort of like um, to place leadership. And a lot of it is around understanding what place, place leadership is um, and around how you can develop place leadership in the councils with staff, as well as out in the community. So um, there's some research being done at the moment on partnerships. Um, it's not being published at the moment, but hopefully, um, some of the things that have come out of my presentation hopefully will be um, supported in the findings. I haven't read it yet, but you know I'm hoping that that will be uh, something that we can share with you at some stage. But I don't know the timeline on that yet, so I'm sure I'll refer to Cathy.